your majesty at your service. Welcome to Fairy Queen Talks. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of my podcast. At home shouldn't mean at risk. On the last episode, I spoke on the worst case scenario and how we can use these situations to help us achieve our goals. For some people, staying at home is the worst case scenario because they are at risk of being victims of domestic violence. Domestic violence can be separated in four types of abuse. One, emotional violence. Two, threats and intimidation. Three, physical abuse. And four, sexual abuse. Anyone can suffer from this, children, adults, and the elderly. In this time of lockdown, victims may feel trapped or helpless because the government is asking them to stay home. The UK government has launched a new public awareness campaign under the hashtag YouAreNotAlone. The message from the UK government is that you do not have to stay home if that means being at risk. And there are many support services that remain available during the lockdown. When we think of domestic violence, we usually think about women. The support that is provided in the UK is not exclusive to women. There is specific help for the following groups. Men. LGBT plus community. Honour-based abuse and forced marriage. Those who can't speak English but live in the UK. Black, Asian and minority ethnic groups, disabled people, deaf people, children, individuals without settled status, individuals on a UK partner visa, friends and family who are concerned about a loved one. And lastly, there's even support for men and women who are harming their partners and families. You can find more detailed information on support on www.gov.uk slash guidance slash domestic abuse. The help that is provided is for victims and for people who commit these offences. For a nation to heal, it is important to address the issue of domestic abuse on both sides. Staying home can become stressful and frustrating. It is important to deal with these emotions in a manner that does not negatively affect others. We need to be able to talk about things that cause us anger, fear or any type of negativity. No one should be at risk of harm in their own home. But if they are, they need to know that there is help. The government has seen an increase of domestic violence during the lockdown. Although the reported numbers of abuse has increased, a lot of people do not even recognise that they are victims in their romantic relationships. I'm going to ask you a set of questions and if you answer yes to any of them, you might be in an abusive relationship. The questions I'm going to ask you will ask you about your current partner or former partner. This is key because even if this happened to you in the past, you are still a victim from it and there's support for you. So, questions regarding emotional abuse. Does your partner or former partner ever belittle you or put you down? Blame you for the abuse or arguments? Deny that abuse is happening or play it down? Isolate you from your family and friends? Stop you from going to college or work. Make unreasonable demands for your attention. Accuse you of flirting or having affairs. Tell you what to wear, who to see, where to go and what to think. Control your money and not give you enough to buy food or other essential things. Questions of threats and intimidation. Does your partner or former partner ever threaten to hurt or kill you, destroy things that belong to you, stand over you, invade your personal space, 
threaten to kill themselves or the children. Read your emails, texts or letters. Harass or follow you. Questions regarding physical abuse. The person abusing you may hurt you in a number of ways. Does your partner or former partner ever slap, hit or punch you? Push or shove you? Bite or kick you? Burn you? Choke you? Or hold you down? Throw things? Questions regarding sexual abuse. Sexual abuse can happen to anyone, whether they're male or female. Does your partner or former partner ever touch you in a way you don't want to be touched? Make unwanted sexual demands? Hurt you during sex? Pressure you to have unsafe sex, for example, not using a condom? Pressure you to have sex? If your partner or former partner has sex with you when you don't want to do this, this is classed as rape. Have you ever felt afraid of your partner or former partner? Have you ever changed your behaviour because you're afraid of what your partner or former partner might do? If you think you may be in an abusive relationship, there is help available. If any of those questions put some doubt in your mind, I would suggest that you contact the support available to you and explore your options. And if you are in immediate danger, call the police. If you think you are a victim, I want you to believe me when I say you are not to blame. It takes courage and strength to recognise and admit that you are a victim. Talk to someone that you trust in your own time. You do not deserve to be abused. You are the only one who can decide how you want to respond to your situation. You can't change the past, but you can shape your future. As your fairy queen, I can be a voice of encouragement, but you are in control of your own life. No one but you deserves to be in control of your actions. It does not matter how long things have gone on for. It will stop when you decide something better for you. If you answered no to any of those questions, I want you to focus on people you know that may say yes to them and be a support to them. Direct them into the government website and help them to seek support. Look out for your neighbours, even if you don't know them. Your report of abuse can make a big difference. If you suspect anyone being an abuser, like your partner, or the partner of your relative or friend, you have the right to ask under the Domestic Violence Disclosure Scheme if someone has a violent past. This information may be disclosed to you if the person of interest is at risk. We all have a duty to save the lives of victims of domestic abuse and we need to make sure that abusers are reported and dealt with in a manner that will save future generations. The safety of vulnerable people in society is of great importance to me. We can all do small things to help those that we know and those who live next door to us. My prayer is that you can be safe at home and know that there is help for you if you need it. At the end of each episode, I address the Queendom. You are not alone. There's help for victims and abusers. Be honest to yourself and live a life without fear. Help your fellow beings to seek help. Don't suffer in silence. Thank you so much for listening to Fairy Queen Talks. Stay safe and I'll see you next time.